Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at the Penguin Computing Booth at SC12 in Salt Lake City. I'm here with the CTO of the company, Phil Picorni. Phil, let's start at the beginning. Um, who is Penguin Computing and who do you help? So uh, Penguin Computing is a uh, reseller of HPC integrated solutions for customers that helps uh, customers who, instead of getting an Erector set, we give you a completely configured running cluster. So rather than getting a pile of boxes on your delivery dock, what you get is a crate with a rack in it. Everything's already installed. Everything, all the software's installed. All the hardware's installed. Uh, it's ready to plug in power and networking, and you can get to work. Okay, so you package that all together. So, so what's new and exciting this week at Penguin Computing? So there's a number of different things. We're really excited about this year's Supercomputing 2012 because we've got Penguin equipment in, in uh, a huge number of booths all around the show floor. Over at the Calzada booth, we have our UDX1, which is a very interesting ARM platform with uh, 48 uh, nodes in it, up to 144 cores. A high-density ARM platform with a lot of storage that, we're, that there's been a lot of uh, excitement about. We're also down in the AMD booth showing off an AMD Trinity-based compute node with our power monitoring software in it, running a demo from CAPS. And uh, there's a number of other, other booths. If folks come down to our booth, we'll uh, point them in the general direction to where else they can find Penguin technology. Okay, so you know, what's going on with APU computing from AMD? I remember last year you had the first supercomputer based on APU. What's happened since then? So uh, in the years since we first deployed the Lano-based uh, super uh, cluster, we've now upgraded that cluster with Trinity APUs, so now they're capable of double precision floating point. And we've also added our power monitoring boards to that cluster so that every node has sort of detailed subsystem level power monitoring. And this power monitoring uh, solution we're now calling Power Insight uh, we're making available to the market in general that people can add to their own machines to do subsystem level power monitoring. They can get the power, not just for the system as a whole, what the, what the node is drawing from the power plug, but also but more detail about how much power is going to the CPU, how much power is going to the hard drives, and eventually we'll have modules for measuring uh, GPU power uh, and uh, other subsystem components. We're uh, excited about this technology and we think uh, it'll be really interesting for researchers who are doing, want to do power aware algorithm development. So not just is this algorithm faster or slower, but is this algorithm more energy efficient or not? Using real metrics and real data on real applications? Yeah, absolutely. Actually getting real feedback from the machine, not just sort of theoretical or, or you know, this sort of gross level tailpipe numbers, but actually, you know, is this drawing more power from the memory? Is this more drawing more power uh, from the CPUs? So Phil, what are we looking at here? So this is an example of an Altus 2A20 uh, APU compute node. Uh, we've got a, uh, an ATX motherboard here with uh, a Trinity APU uh, processor. There are four DIMM slots that we can use to get up to 32 gigs of memory. Um, we also have two high performance uh, PCI slots that we can use for InfiniBand, or in this case, uh, this is a 10 gigabit Ethernet card or a high performance storage card. Uh, uh, we have uh, eight drive bays up here in the front. And then uh, this system doesn't have our power monitoring board in it, but uh, if it did, there would be additional sensors located on the power harnesses here uh, that would be used to collect the information about power draw of the individual subsystems, the CPU, the memory, the motherboard components, the hard drive components, the fans, those kinds of things. Okay, and I wanted to ask you about the Fire Pro, uh, Phil, because I see it looks like a monitor. Uh, uh, does this do graphics and uh, general purpose uh, you know, number crunching? Does it do both? Or yeah, so this, this card is uh, an example. We're, we're kind of uh, excited to have this. We're one of the few vendors that's actually showing uh, a Fire Pro S10,000 card. Um, uh, this would obviously not fit in an APU chassis. You don't need it because you've got the graphics processing actually in the CPU. Right. But, um, but this, this card has uh, two ASICs on it, delivers, uh, I believe, 1.6 teraflops of single precision, double precision floating point. Um, so very powerful card. Uh, it does have uh, graphics outputs, but there will also be sort of server grade versions of these for GPU compute uh, using AMD's OpenCL. Okay. And, and then back to, back to the, what's, what's the advantages of, of this platform, uh, you know, from, from other competitive offerings out there? What would you say? Yeah, so uh, last night I was discussing with uh, Tom Sterling um, you know, one of the, the founders of uh, Beowulf Compute Technology that's in our skilled uh, clusterware. Um, and uh, we were talking about, you know, the location of, uh, of compute resources like this card on the sort of the wrong side of the PCI bus. With a APU processor, you have the GPU built into the CPU so that it's more directly attached to the RAM and therefore you can eliminate some of the memory bottlenecks and the need to copy data from memory into the graphics card to operate on it before you can copy the results back. Uh, with an APU, you can uh, pass memory 
uh, between the CPU and the GPU and not actually have to copy those, those input, the, the inputs and copy back the outputs uh, from the processing. So, so that's really the excitement and the, uh, uh, the exciting aspect of APU computing.